Welcome back to my little channel. Today I want to talk about the Robbers Cave experiment and what it says about our current society. And obviously the first question then becomes what is the Robbers Cave experiment? Well, the Robbers Cave experiment was an experiment done in the early 1950s, late 1940s by Musafar Sharif, a psychologist that is often seen as one of the founders of social psychology. And this experiment was set up to test his theory known as realistic conflict theory. Okay, so how was this experiment then set up? Well, simplified, it boiled down to two groups of kids. And in the beginning, they had little to no interaction with one another, so the group created their own identity, their own structure, their own morals, and their own values. And then the two groups were introduced to one another in a series of conflicts. Well, they weren't really conflicts, because when people say conflicts, they mean fights. They were competition. A thug of war, a game of baseball, stuff like that. But in all those competitions, sorry, conflict still fits, they could win or lose. And on the whole measure of things, you could win something at the end. This caused the competition to grow rather strong. I don't know. Wrong word. Can't find a better one right now. Why am I telling you this? Well, this is kind of what identity politics always boils down to. We are one group, there's another group, and we are in competition with each other. For what? The what, in this case, doesn't even matter. It could be anything. But the fact that there is a competition between group A and group B is basically what it boils down to. And let's be honest, this is what's going on in most of the Western world, not just in the United States of America. After all, in nearly all of the Western countries, there is the call of Black Lives Matter, or the call to aid refugees and immigrants, whom themselves do not seem to bother to adhere by the laws of the country they go to. And those that agree with these things can roughly be seen as one group, and those that do not can roughly be seen as the other group. Obviously, there are other dichotomies in society, because obviously there are dichotomies based on sexuality or on gender, because people constantly try to create dichotomies. It's a divide and conquer metric. It doesn't make sense that people would want to do this, but there are people that seem to be actively seeking to do this. Now, there seems to be little interaction between these groups. If you're part of group A and you disagree with group B, most people will then not seek out people from group B to actively talk about it. And if they do, it's more to berate them and to swear at them, insult them. And because of that, well, people seem to strengthen themselves in their own beliefs. It always boils down to progressive versus conservative, or uh, black versus white, but they don't listen to each other. And because there's so little interaction, the us versus them mentality strengthens. Their belief in their being right increases. And this is mostly caused because one group is denying the other group the liberty of speaking and, and sharing their message, sharing their ideas, which in turn will then cause the other group to feel aggressed against and respond usually roughly in the same way. And as long as we are being opposed by this, and as long as we are drowning out the speech of those that we oppose, we are strengthening the negative spiral. Eventually, this will always escalate to violence. And for, for this again, we can look at what's going on in America, what's going on in, in, in lots of countries in Europe. In the Robbers Cave experiment, the researchers running the show needed to stand up to stop physical violence. 
But what we are seeing happening in a lot of places in the Western world, again, not just in certain states in America, is that the police, the ones that need to intervene when it comes to violence, are told to stand down or actively choose sides, which increases the us versus them mentality and which will increase the violence. Sounds scary to you? It should sound scary because it is. But well, what can be done to end this negative cycle? Yeah, that is rather the kicker because it's at one point really simple, but at the other point it's really difficult. It's rather easy to break the cycle by having people work together, by groups working together, aiming themselves at a common goal, getting to know each other and each other's plights. So that doesn't sound that difficult at all. So why did I say it was difficult? It's difficult because one group is clearly not interested in doing this. They rather silence everyone that does not agree with them prevent free speech and the free exchange of ideas, for they conflict with what they hold to be true. And if no third party steps in and uses what they need to end the violence, the violence will escalate, until one of the two groups has been thoroughly defeated. So who's to blame for this? Well, the fun thing is, I can't really say anyone is to blame for this. It's an in-group, out-group dichotomy, and obviously the people of one group will blame the people of the other group, and the people of the other group will retroactively report that the in-groups are the ones that are the problem. And this is kind of continuing the negative cycle. There's little we can do about it unless people learn to step over themselves. Let go of their need to conquer and win. Go into discussions with other people. Don't try to baffle them with bullshit. Try to explain things. And accept it if people do not agree with you. And though I did my best to not take sides in everything I said so far, obviously there are only two sides, no doubt there will be people ready to claim that I am pro one group or the other, and therefore what I say can be dismissed. Now, it may be true that I might hold certain beliefs, but I really tried my best to make this talk as neutral as possible. Because neutrality is what we need. But I'm curious to hear what you think. How do you think this could develop? What could be done to change this? Criticism, as always, is more than welcome, and I look forward to hear your opinions. And I hope to see you all next time.